If you've ever taken a look at a professional camera, you'll see that it has four main camera modes, M, A, S, and P. But you don't need to have a professional camera to take advantage of these because even with entry level cameras, they still feature the same modes. But how can we use them to take better photos and what do they do? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm gonna show you. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I do photography tutorials, I share tips and tricks, and do occasional gear reviews as well. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. In this video, we're gonna talk about camera modes, and in particular, the manual or semi-manual camera modes. Now, on the top of your camera, you're gonna find a round dial, and this is called the mode dial. It allows you to select different camera modes. The factory default setting is auto, but you may also have other options such as portrait, landscape, you might have macro, maybe sports mode as well. And then there's the very mysterious M, A, S and P modes. Or if you've got a Canon camera on your camera, it will be M, A, V, T, V and P. Now it doesn't matter whether you're using a DSLR camera, a mirrorless camera, or even a bridge camera, as most cameras will offer these modes alongside the usual automatic and C modes. But why should you consider using these? Why should I get out of auto? Well, once you're out of auto, once you start taking control of the camera, you have the ability to change camera features, and this gives you more creative control over your image. Maybe you want your images to be brighter, maybe darker, Maybe you want to freeze movement or show movement. How about blurry in backgrounds? These are the sorts of things you can do when you get out of auto. So let's start by taking a look at the camera mode dial, which is usually found on the top of the camera. M is full manual. This means you have creative control of the aperture, shutter and ISO. A is aperture priority. If you've got a Canon, this is shown as AV. S is shutter priority, and again, if you've got a Canon, it's TV. This stands for time value. And finally, there's P for program. So those are the four modes that we're gonna be talking about in this video. Now, these can get a bit confusing sometimes, so to help you guys out, I've created a tip sheet. It's a free download on the PhotoGenius website, and I've put a link in the description below this video. Now, during this video, you are gonna hear me talking about three very important things, aperture, shutter, and ISO, collectively known as the exposure triangle. Using these three things, we can do things like controller exposure, they will affect movement, and we can do cool things like blur backgrounds. But don't worry, in this video, to enjoy it, you don't need to understand how they work but I have done separate videos on all three. I do recommend you checking them out. And for that reason, I've put links in the description below the video so you can watch them later. Now to start things off, we're gonna look at program mode, which is P on the mode dial. Now this mode is the closest to auto in that the camera is looking after all the key functions on your behalf. But unlike full auto, the program mode allows you to make some changes and therefore you can be a bit more creative with your camera. I'm gonna show you how it works. So down by the water, the camera is in the program mode and I have preset the ISO to 200. Now when I press the shutter button halfway, the camera selects a shutter speed and aperture for me. So let's take picture number one. Now to show you how you can be more creative using the program mode, I'm gonna hold the exposure compensation button down and turn the dial on the top of the camera to the right. You will see the light meter indicator moves to the right, indicating our next image will be slightly overexposed. I then repeat, but turn the dial to the left to move the indicator to the left for a slightly underexposed image. Now each of the images will be slightly different. This is image number three, this is number two, and this is number one. Now remember, in auto mode, you have no control over exposure. So out of those three images, if you preferred image number two or number three, well, you wouldn't have got those because in auto, you're only gonna get image number one. Program mode is a great, fun, and relatively easy mode to get you started. Okay, the next camera mode we're gonna look at is aperture priority. Now this is A on the camera dial. Unless you're using a Canon camera, then it's AV. Now aperture priority means that we're able to control the aperture, 
with the camera looking after the shutter speed and the ISO for us. So that's two things we don't have to worry about. Aperture is found in the lens. By opening the aperture, we can let more light through the lens. By closing the aperture down and making it smaller, we can let less light through the lens. So it's a great way of controlling our exposure. But where the aperture priority mode really shines is in controlling something called depth of field. Now that's a fancy term for blurring backgrounds. Take a look at these two images. I'm going to show you how I did this using the aperture priority mode. To put this to the test, I'm using some figures from the Netflix program Stranger Things. Bonus points if you can name all three characters. AV on the display confirms we are in the aperture priority mode. We have the ISO set at 200 and all we need to do now is choose an aperture and I'm going to select the widest or largest aperture possible which is f5 on this particular kit lens. Now when I press the shutter button halfway the camera automatically selects the shutter speed and we can take our first image. Now you will notice the middle character is sharp, this is where my focus point was, but the other two characters are blurry and out of focus. This is called a shallow depth of field. Now for the next image I want to try and get all the characters in focus and I can do this by selecting a larger F number which is a smaller aperture. You can see as I do this the camera is automatically adjusting the shutter speed for me. I'm going to stop at F32, the camera has selected a shutter speed of 5 seconds so it's a good job I'm using a tripod. And here we have all three characters in focus, this is called a greater depth of field. So as you can see, the aperture priority mode is a really cool camera mode to use. Now it's very popular with portrait photographers who mostly want blurry backgrounds. Remember, to get that look, you want the aperture wide, which is a lower F number. But as popular as it is with portrait photographers, if you like doing landscapes, you can use the aperture priority mode as well. But you do need to close the aperture down so you get a greater depth of field. Hot tip for you, F11. F11 is a smaller aperture and should give you generally a pretty decent depth of field and a nice sharp image. And if you love your landscape photography, make sure you invest in a tripod. The next mode we're going to look at is shutter priority. This is S on the camera dial. Unless you're using a Canon camera, then it's TV. That stands for time value. Now, as the name suggests, this mode allows us to control the shutter with the camera now looking after the aperture and the ISO for us. It's a really cool mode. Now you don't need to know too much about the shutter, but think of it like a door. It sits behind the lens and it's closed until the moment you press the shutter button down. Then the shutter will open and close and let light into the camera. Now typically on a bright sunny day, we would want the shutter to open but close quite quickly so we don't overexpose our image and let too much light into the camera. On a dull overcast day, what we can do is slow the shutter down or open it longer to let more light into the camera. And with these types of cameras, you can take amazing photos at night time by doing what is generally called a long exposure. That's when you put your camera on a tripod and the shutter is open for several seconds or maybe longer. So shutter priority is a really cool mode and you can use it to adjust your exposure, but it also affects movement. And I'm going to show you some examples. To demonstrate this, I've chosen water as my moving subject. And with the ISO set at 100 and the shutter set to 1 50th of a second, the camera chose an aperture of f4 for image number one. Now for the next image, I selected a slower shutter speed of one second. The camera now selected f29 as the aperture. And as you can see, the slower shutter speed gives a pleasing blur look to the water. Now one thing to be mindful of when using shutter priority is the flashing aperture number. This is the camera letting you know that the image will be under or overexposed. To fix this, just adjust the shutter until the F number stops flashing. So shutter priority mode is just another great mode that allows us to be even more creative with our cameras. Just remember to look out for the flashing F numbers. That's your aperture. 
that's being set by the camera when you're using shutter priority mode. So if it's flashing, it means that the shutter speed you're trying to use is either too fast or too slow, and the camera can't find a corresponding aperture that gives you a balanced exposure. So just to play around with the different shutter speeds until it stops flashing. I love shutter priority mode, and I personally use it all the time when I'm doing sports photography, because I can lock in the shutter speed, the camera looks after the aperture, and I'm good to go. It's a great mode. Now, if you're feeling brave or you're just a bit more confident with your camera, you might want to give manual a go. This is M on the camera dial. And this means that you're now in control of the shutter, aperture, and the ISO. This is the mode the pros use, but it's not as scary as some people think. Now, what I'm going to do first is show you how to change the aperture, shutter, and ISO on a Canon camera, and then on a Nikon. And then we're going to take some pictures. So let's start with ISO. You'll usually find a button on the back, sometimes the top of the camera. Press the button for your ISO options. You can change these by using the buttons on the back of the camera or turning the dial on most of the Canon cameras. Press set to lock in your choice. Next up is the aperture, which is the F number. For this, you hold down the AV button on the back of the camera and you turn the dial on the top of the camera. Dial into the right for a bigger F number, smaller aperture, Dialing to the left for a smaller F number, which is a larger or wider aperture. And finally, how to change the shutter speed. This is the easiest one because all you got to do is turn the dial. Dial to the right for the faster shutter speed. Dial to the left for a slower shutter speed or longer exposure. To change the ISO on a Nikon camera, all you've got to do is press the I button, select ISO from the menu on the screen and press OK. You can now choose whichever option you want by using the buttons on the back of the camera. Press OK to confirm. Next up is the aperture. To change this, you hold the aperture or exposure compensation button down on the top of the camera. Dialing to the right will give you a bigger F number, which is a smaller aperture. Dialing to the left for a smaller F number, which is a larger or wider aperture. And finally, how to change the shutter speed. Again, just like on the Canon cameras, very easy because all you got to do is turn the dial. Dial to the right for a faster, dial to the left for a slower shutter speed. So now you know how to change the key functions on a Nikon and Canon camera. Let's just spend a moment on ISO. That's the one we haven't really talked about at length in this video. But it is worth an extra mention because it is just another way of controlling light and does affect our exposure. Now, I don't want to go into it in depth. I've done a separate video on it. Remember the links below. But for now, ISO is all to do with the electronics side of your camera. Think of it a bit like how you might use the brightness control on your TV. You know that if you press the brightness up, the number goes up, your picture gets brighter, and if you reduce it, the number goes down and your image or your TV screen gets darker. That's a bit like how the ISO works. Now, my recommendation is to keep the ISO at a lower number because if you go too high, your picture quality will suffer. ISO default for me is 200. So what we've done is we've locked in ISO 200 on these cameras. Now let's go take some photos. So once again, down to the water, I'm using a Nikon camera this time in the manual mode and I have my ISO set to 200. Now in manual, I have full control. So I'm gonna start by changing the aperture to f11. Once done, I take a look at the camera's light meter, which is showing massive underexposure due to the very fast shutter speed. So I'm going to dial to the left to select a slower or longer shutter speed to let more light into the camera. You can see the meters adjusting, and once we hit the middle marker, we are ready to take picture number one. Now next I'm going to increase the shutter speed to give us an underexposed reading. This is picture number two. Likewise, selecting a slower shutter speed will give us an overexposed image. That's picture number three. So now we have three different versions and that's how you shoot in the manual mode. And before I headed back to the office, I grabbed this quick shot with the Canon T7 using a wide angle lens. And if you wanna know more about wide angle lenses, leave a comment below this video. 
So the manual mode can be a bit daunting at first because you're having to think about three things, but with practice, it's not as scary as people think. But if you're not quite ready for manual, there's the aperture priority mode that you can play with, there's shutter priority mode that you can play with, and if you're an absolute beginner, program mode is awesome. All of these modes are a big step up from just shooting in auto. In auto, your fancy camera becomes a point and shoot camera, and I think that's a bit of a shame. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've picked up some great tips. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget you can leave your comments, suggestions and questions down below and I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.